Mike Schultz and I'm doing my presentation on to hack or not to hack the Ashley Madison affair. Specifically, I'm asking the question, is the hacking of Ashley Madison morally justifiable? According to our favorite normative ethics categories, deontology, consequentialism, and virtue theory. But first, a little background is in order. Last summer, in July of 2015, headlines hit the press like an atom bomb. Ashley Madison, the infamous dating website of secret adulterous affairs, got hacked. And seriously. 37 million users ran for cover as their private data, including names, credit cards, email exchanges, sexual preferences, all got leaked to the public. Among the 37 million were such high-profile cases as Josh Duggar from TLC or The Learning Channels, 19 kids and counting. The press had a field day with him. And many others, including some 400 pastors that were outed. But that wasn't the worst of it. Multiple suicides, sadly, were associated with the fallout from the Ashley Madison hack and subsequent leak. Even the CEO of Avid Life Media Incorporated, which is Ashley Madison's parent company, suffered the loss of his position. Officially, the press reported that he, quote-unquote, resigned. So here's a quick overview of the facts of the case in timeline fashion. It all started on July 12, 2015, when some employees of Ashley Madison noticed this warning on their screens, demanding that two of Avid Life Media's websites, namely the A and uh, EM that you see up there, or Ashley Madison and Established Men, that those websites be taken down immediately. Now, Established Men as you can see in the highlighted section here, is a website as described by the hackers that hooks up older men with younger women for prostitution purposes and amounts to nothing less than human sex trafficking, as per the hackers. Now, as a token that these hackers meant business, the impact team, as they called themselves, provided a small amount of private data that they had hacked as verification that the threats that they were making were genuine. A week after those initial threats were received, Ashley Madison informed investigative reporter Brian Krebs from KrebsOnSecurity.com about the threat. And the threat said that all clients' data will be leaked if those sites are not shut down. About a month later, the impact team made good on those threats by serving this ominous notice stating, Time's up. So after that initial data leak that came in at only about 40 megabytes, just to prove they have the goods, the impact team followed it up with a huge 9.7 gigabyte data dump onto the so-called dark web. You know, those BitTorrent sites that people go to to download illegal material and that are often infested with viruses and other malware that we do well to stay away from. But by the time of the third and final data dump, all the privacy data of the Ashley Madison adultery clients had made its way to the mainstream web for anyone online to see and to blog about. And of course, many did. That third data dump also included the private emails of CEO Biderman himself, which gave lurid detailed accounts of his own secret sexual affairs, which he had explicitly denied in guest interviews with his wife right there alongside him on such talk shows as The View. Many wondered, is this the end of the line for Ashley Madison? They had a half-billion-dollar class-action Canadian lawsuit come against them. On top of that, more U.S. lawsuits were coming their way. They had hoped to raise about $200 million in an initial public offering on the London Stock Exchange, partly because the Toronto Stock Exchange did not want them and it was doubtful in their minds that they could come aboard the New York Stock Exchange. They thought the moral environment was more liberal in England, and so they pursued the London Stock Exchange, but even that was doubtful now. But if you can believe the interim managing team of execs over there at Ashley Madison, they said more people, even into the hundreds of thousands, are still signing up at their website, AshleyMadison.com. So the verdict is still out as to how much longer this company can survive. 
Did the Impact team successfully mark the beginning of the end for Ashley Madison and Avid Life Media with their hack and subsequent leak? Who are these hackers anyway, and why did they do it? These questions are going to help our ethical analysis specifically in the area of virtue theory. The short answer is, of course, as you might imagine, we do not know who these guys or women, or maybe it's just a single person, um, we do not know the identity of the impact team. Hackers, like Ashley Madison, like secrets too, especially when it comes to their own identity. Obviously, they can avoid arrest this way, but is that what the impact team was trying to do? Just simply avoid arrest? Were these hackers hacking just for kicks to show the world that they could do it? We have a few pieces of the puzzle that we can begin fitting together in order to get a somewhat clearer picture. Who is the impact team? Why did they do it? According to Biderman, he thinks that the impact team was somebody who, quote unquote, touched his IT system, but somebody from outside his company, not an employee, someone who came in under contract, perhaps. Brian Krebs, the journalist that I mentioned earlier, believes that he's on the trail of a mysterious tweeter who goes by the name of Thaddeus Zoo, who... Uh, whom Krebs believes knows something about the in impact team, but Thaddeus Zhu himself is probably not a part of that team. And he's also not telling much. We actually know more why the impact team hacked because they give us some of the reasons. One item that they cited was this egregious $19, quote, full delete, unquote, charge that Ashley Madison would charging those clients who had signed up for their service and later regretted giving their true information online to the adultery website. In order to have their personal data deleted from Ashley Madison, it would cost them $19. The impact team, with full access to all the data, claims Ashley Madison made a cool $1.7 million off these full deletes. And then to add insult to injury, did not actually fully delete the data of these paying clients. And the proof is right there on the World Wide Web for all to see. I mentioned the sex trafficking charge that the impact team accused established men of being, in effect. And the impact team uses the metaphor, perhaps borrowed from CEO Noel Biderman himself, that Ashley Madison is like a drug of secrecy. Per the impact team, Ashley Madison abuses their druggies or junkies and keeps them on the line by essentially blackmailing money out of them. Now, sometimes you can learn a lot about people by what they do not do. In this case, with the impact team, apparently there was no monetary incentive for their action. They did not make any demands for money for themselves. It was Ashley Madison doing all the demanding for money from their own clients, the impact team would say. Neither was the impact team working for any known competitor to try and get inside secrets of the trade from Ashley Madison or steal a client list or any of that. And finally, there's neither any indication that any angry individual was just trying to get back at the company for ruining their own marriage or any such scenario along those lines. Well, why is this important to look at the motives or what weren't the motives of the impact team? We're um, just trying to piece together all the clues that we can. And first of all, we have to admit that all this investigation along these lines is not important with respect to both the deontological question and the consequentialist question. Deontology studies the law, rule, or principle, that is the universal absolute that was violated. It knows no partiality as to who it was that violated that standard. It's blind justice. And a consequentialist is going to focus on the consequences, the fallout, which we've addressed already somewhat. Only the virtue theorist says the question of motive is an important one, because that goes to the character of the people doing the action. Were these acting courageously, and was it for a noble cause? What virtue, uh, what good, true, or beautiful act was at work here? 
Again, what does matter to a deontologist is absolute compliance or compliance to an absolute. To a consequentialist, consequences are what is important. So with that little bit of summary, already we can begin to come to some preliminary conclusions on the matter. Is the Ashley Madison hacking morally justifiable? Well, per deontology, no, it is not. Why? Because it's breaking and entering. It's stealing. And all that is against the law. Absolute standards were violated. About the only way to consider any other verdict for a deontologist or turn, to turn that not into a question of possibility would be to consider the possible counter argument, um, the lesser of two evils. But even then, the action itself is still wrong. It's just the better of two available options in a fallen world. Here one thinks of Bonhoeffer and Hitler, where Bonhoeffer saw as the lesser of two evils to conspire to assassinate the Fuhrer. But he never tried to justify that assassination attempt. And to apply the gravity of Bonhoeffer's situation to the situation here at Ashley Madison might be too big a stretch. Another possible argument might be this idea of reducing the whole concept, the practice, the reality, reality of marriage to sheer meaninglessness if Ashley Madison was indeed allowed to prosper with $200 million more at a public offering and to truly expand globally to become the Starbucks of adultery around this shrinking world. It would shrink the meaning of marriage to nothing. Now, this parallels the Kantian concept of lying being morally wrong, but not because it's stated thus in the Seventh Commandment, but because if everybody lied all the time, then truth, and therefore even lying, would become meaningless. They would be both become meaningless terms with no longer any universal application. So when something becomes reduced that low there just might be a possible deontological justification in there for doing something that initially a deontologist would recoil from doing. But we're going to go with the safer bet that per deontology, the hacking was not justified. Per consequentialism, well, here we have many consequences to look at. And we can never look at them all unless we were God himself. So what matters then is which consequences a consequentialist decides to focus on. Then the argument can go both ways. Here are some arguments against the hacking. One, discord in relationships. These relationships were kept secretly safe or safely secret for a while until the impact team comes along and blows the lid off that system that seems to have been working for some. And this discord, of course, could lead to divorce. And in many occasions did, and probably more divorces to come. Divorce costs money, separates children from parents. Only the divorce attorneys see that one as a positive. And by the way, Byerman shouldn't, or maybe he in fact doesn't like divorce either, at least not on too large a scale, because if there were no more, no more good marriages left to adulterate and everybody got a divorce, then he'd have to think of a new marketing angle, which he being the savvy businessman that he is probably could. Finally, death. Some Ashley Madison clients, three that we know of, who, who were exposed by the data leak did despair to the point of suicide, one of whom was a New Orleans pastor. Very sad. I haven't heard of any spouses actually killing their husband or wife after learning of their affairs. No homicide reports yet. But I'm sure there are plenty of spouses that felt like it. So then, using these consequences in the argument, no, 
the hacking was not justifiable. But as I said, it depends on which consequences one is focusing on. Here are some that argue for justifying the hacking. Ashley Madison devastates families. Whether the affair remains secret or not, there is real damage to the integrity of the sanctity of the marriage relationship. Lies grow into bigger lies. And there's just so much potential and real damage um, from having a secret affair. Because Ashley Madison devastates families, then therefore it damages society for which the institution of the family is the backbone. And finally, with Ashley Madison's astronomical growth projected um, and now kept in check, or perhaps even its imminent demise, the lands which Ashley Madison had infested with its lies and lures, its deceit and devastation, these lands are now better off without them. Hard-working married couples have enough struggle in this life day to day and with that serpent in the grass out of the picture, maybe people have a better chance at growing healthy and whole and achieving true happiness. So looking at these consequences, yes, one might justify the use of hacking to rid the culture of this corrosive element, Ashley Madison. There are probably a lot of people out there who just don't feel too bad about what happened to Ashley Madison. Um, the amount of memes that the Ashley Madison scandal generated are incalculable. There are definitely some funny ones, despite the gravity of the situation. And this one, of course, comes from that giant of ethical analysis himself, Austin Powers. Who's really upset that Ashley Madison got hacked? Honestly. And speaking of ethical giants, he said sarcastically, Ashley Madison CEO, Noel Biderman, who doesn't even like the term ethics. He actually did some of our hard work for us in regard to the ethical identity of this mysterious impact team. And this comes from Ashley Madison's official statement released to the press just after the hack. It says, quote, this event is not an act of hacktivism. It is an act of criminality. It is an illegal action against the individual members of AshleyMadison.com, as well as any free-thinking people who choose to engage in fully lawful online activities. Continuing this denunciation, the criminal or criminals involved in this act have appointed themselves as the moral judge, juror, and executioner, seeing fit to impose a personal notion of virtue on all of society. We will not sit idly by and allow these thieves to force their personal ideology on citizens around the world. Now let me read that crucial part again. Ashley Madison writes that the impact team saw, quote, fit to impose a personal notion of virtue on all of society, unquote. That's perhaps unwittingly insightful. And one might speculate, probably something the impact team would take as a compliment. One never knows for sure. So with that lead in, then let's uh, take a look at our main thesis question now with respect to virtue theory. Was the character expressed by the impact, impact team's actions good, noble, altruistic? Was it just, courageous, temperate? Not necessarily perfectly, but substantially. We as Christians in a fallen world look in the mirror and are reminded every day that there was and is only one who is perfect in all the virtues. And he walked on water, our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw that those motives were not about money or personal gain, not about seeking a competitive edge, not pursuing revenge, no personal vendetta against Ashley Madison that we have evidence for anyway. What we do have evidence for, in summary then, is that the impact team's actions were other-centered. At one point, they said that they were doing this for the next, quote-unquote, 60 million would-be dupes or druggies in Ashley Madison's crosshairs. They were protective of marriage, defending its honor and goodness against calculated corruption. They were concerned for truth 
acknowledging the pain first, but as they wrote to the many exposed adulterers, you'll get over it. They certainly weren't softies, were they? So it looks like we could say, in response to our question on the top of the slide there then, that yes, from a virtue theory perspective, it seems like the hacking was morally justifiable. And it's also probably safe to give those preliminary conclusions now a more definitive conclusion, given that the impact team sought to liberate current Ashley Madison drug addicts and protect future abuse victims. The impact team agrees with Ashley Madison on the notion of virtue, that they, the impact team, indeed had virtue, and they were imposing virtue on Ashley Madison, and for that matter, society too. The final verdict for virtue theory then comes in as, yes, the Ashley Madison hacking was morally justifiable according to virtue theory. So now our overall conclusions in summary then in reference to all three kinds of normative ethics, deontology, consequentialism, and virtue theory are as follows. That a deontologist would say 99% of the time that the impact team's hacking was not morally justifiable. We can say that a consequentialist could go both ways. Their verdict comes in from both directions, depending on which consequences are in view. And finally, virtue theory, I'm bold to say, is coming in from the other side, that yes, according to this ethical approach, the impact team's hacking is morally justifiable. They acted for others in an effort to protect them from destructive agents. And it's most likely that they will not be thanked for their service, such as the thankless job of a masked hero that is willing to even look bad in order to bring about good. Those are my conclusions. Thanks for watching.